Often in ciphers, what happens is that we end up with an operation that looks a bit like this m to the power of e, and we also have a mod p. So that's m to the power of e, and then we take the mod uh, of p. So the mod of p is a division by p, and then we only take the remainder. So this value becomes extremely large and then is constrained by this value of p. So on a computer which has limited sizes for registers and computation power, how do we actually calculate m to the power of e in an efficient way? So if we had uh, something like uh, 5 to the power of 129, how do we compute that efficiently? Well, it was John Napier that uh, defined that a to the power of b times a to the power of c is equal to a to the power of a plus c. And a to the power of b to the power of c is equal to a, b, c. So it's with these rules that we can actually create an efficient scheme. So let's look at our 125 to the power of 129. So what we can do is, is we can square and then we can square again. So that will give us uh, 5 to the power of 4. Square again gives us 5 to the power of 8, 5 to the power of 16, and then very quickly we can get to 5 to the power of 128. So just on a number of jumps, we've actually been able to get to this large value just by squaring each time. If we now multiply that by uh, a value, the value here, then we get 5 to the power of 129. So it's this squaring operation that allows us to be able to jump up uh, very quickly and then we can uh, also employ a multiply and get us to uh, these powers very quickly. So let's look at a basic algorithm called the multiply and square and see how we can actually efficiently uh, define these uh, operations. So let's take 5 to the power of 9. So we take uh, the exponent uh, here and we'll lay it out in binary. So there it is there. That's a 1, a 2, a 4 and an 8. We start here and if we hit a 0 then we square. So we will square here. We hit another 0. So again we will square. And then we hit a 1. So what we'll do is we'll square and multiply. Whenever we hit 1, we square and multiply. Whenever we hit 0, we just square. So here we are, 5 to the power of 4. We'll square that, and now we need to multiply. So that becomes 5 to the power of 8 times 5, which is equal to 5 to the power of 9. Okay, so the basic method that we have is that if we, we start with our most significant one, and then we'll work backwards. If we see a zero, we square. If we see a zero, we square. If we see a one, we square, and then we multiply. So this is square, square, and multiply. So let's see if we can see a basic example here. So here we are and we have 7 to the power of 125, an extremely large number, as we can see from the result there. And it would take us a, a great deal of computation power if we multiplied 7 by itself 1,025 times. But because we're using this method, we only need 11 operations to be able to get there. So the value of 1,025 is this here. So 1 and then a 1024 here. So we start from the 0 here and the first one will be a square, 49. 
and then the second one is also a zero so we'll do the same we'll square and we keep going until we get to the very last bit which is a one in this case so we can see here the very last operation involves both a square and a multiply we could try again with 126 and we'll actually see in this case that on the tenth operation we have a square and a multiply and on the very last one we just have a square okay so in this way we can actually create uh, efficient ways to be able to uh, perform our uh, exponent uh, calculation Okay, thank you.